Hi, hi, hi there, it's June, your local hair pist. I want to take a minute to explain what exactly my approach to seasonal haircut might be. Simply put, if your hair is shorter than your nape, which is a little bit different for each of us, you're gonna ask your barber or your hairdresser to go just a tad a little shorter because we're, we're more active, we sweat more. The main way to make your hair grow a little faster is just sweat, sauna, workouts, Probably a little bit of positive thinking too wouldn't hurt. So if you do notice that your hair grows a little bit faster in the warmer months, it's simply put just ask them to go a little bit shorter for you. For anyone who's middle length, so that would be myself and about hanging out in this range. So where your nape is to the middle, shoulder, collarbone, that area is where you're gonna keep coming back to uh, your your whole life. It's very engaging so people will read the features first and then they'll hang out with the accessory of the hair and then they'll dive back. So if you're trying to engage with your audience that's a really great place to hang out and it also it distracts uh, against uh, aging lines. So how our jawline changes as we move through our years and through our necklines uh, creates a little bit of friends and so if you're hanging out in that area it distracts from that area and it doesn't take away from your youth full vibe that you're trying to like showcase to your to your viewers so if you're hanging out from shoulder to there the hair is short enough that it doesn't necessarily require tons of layers but if you love a lot of movement a lot of texture a lot of body and a lot of thickness go there go as short as you feel like now in terms of how short layers are in terms for myself as a guideline i always go about four inches so if the hair is very long so meaning bottom bottom of the middle of the of the back um middle is about here and shorter i always use like a four inch ratio the reason why i do that is so that the haircuts can continue to last the full four to six months Everyone's on a budget, so it's time, it's finances. You want your haircut to last that entire time. So if us as the designers spend the time on your haircut, blend the layers, actually put a little bit of effort in, and you guys are doing a great job of doing your hair homework, so adding a lot of moisture, adding a lot of protein, brushing your hair, these type of things, uh, cool rinses, just loving it back you're gonna get a long lasting haircut but if that person does spend that time on it for you it's a team effort you're gonna get a, a long lasting haircut so when you're when you decide to perhaps do more layers which summer can support because the weather is warmer so it can support those very short uh, textured haircuts uh, remember that if you go a little bit too much shorter about an inch to two depending on how long you go in between those haircut visits it will become a little fuzzy, a little dry, and it'll start to fray. So you'll notice just over your layers, wherever they happen to be in the scope of where your length is, all the way down will be a little bit more prone to puffiness and dryness. So keep that in mind if you are gonna go really shaggy or, or really, really extreme with your layering in that haircut. Uh, summer's the time to do it for sure, so go a little crazy with your texture. Um, in terms of the perimeters, there's literally three ways to do a perimeter. Super horizontal, so that's a very crisp line. That's gonna create the most amount of weight in someone's hair, that's what mine is. No layers, super blunt, very crisp, very, very classic. Thanks, Lorraine. And you're also going to notice that that's gonna last the longest. So it takes the longest for that to get a little bit more dry and puffy and the comb in the shower start to snag. That's when you know you need a haircut, heads up. Uh, number two is a little bit vertical. So that's a really great one for spring and fall haircuts where the weather is really all over the place. It's a roller coaster of temperature. So it's nice to have a little bit of air conditioning, but you can still control your haircut and you can make it last as long as possible. And even when someone's cutting your hair vertically, they can do it really shallow so it's not creating tons of serration at the per at the perimeter so it can last a little bit longer and that gives people a little bit of movement a little bit of texture but it's not too wild where it's hard to control and then the third thing is really soft on the perimeter really shaggy uh, razor haircuts are are very often a summer summer tool that we like to use but remember that if you do use this tool I have found that after doing a razor haircut, each section that I do, I do do scissor work on top so that I'm able to 
allow the haircut to last just a little bit longer. That way the client doesn't feel like, oh, I have to, just because I got a razor haircut, I have to do this a little bit more frequently, but it does uh, really soften that perimeter. So you're getting those really beautiful, fun shapes, but there is a little bit of a cost to it where it won't really last you quite as long as when they do scissor work on you. And note that uh, it's very nice to understand the type of hair uh, in terms of texture that you have. So you wouldn't want to do it on a haircut, a hair quality that is a little bit too fine because it might serrate it and break it down a little bit too much. So you're looking for more on the medium uh, texture of the fineness. Um, if it's too, too coarse, it might also give it a lot of dryness. And you can tell when someone is using a fresh razor is that the head won't be bobbing when they're doing each section. So you know that they're investing in you in a new razor. And some heads of hair, uh, the quality of the hair, the density of the hair, you might have to go through maybe even two or three razors if there's a lot of hair to go through or the texture is a little bit thicker and that's okay as long as they're trying to be ethical with how they're performing that haircut for you. So simply put, if you're gonna go a little bit shorter, uh, do it in the summer. If you're gonna grow your hair a little longer, fall, winter are great times to do that and just monitor where your layering is. If you happen to have a forever fringe where it's closing off your, your face, so fringing in general, if you, you carry it throughout the whole calendar year, just ask them to lighten it up a little bit. And if you haven't started to sort of grow your fringe out a little bit to the curtain or to the sweeping, uh, or maybe you grew it all the way around the face frame, that is a really nice way to when you have your hair up, you've got some framing around there. But honestly, if you are always carrying that fringe, just be mindful that you want to have a little bit more air conditioning on the face so we can see your features, we can see your face. I, I tend to ask people or at least slightly recommend that they, they have that fringe, just start to grow it to the curtain or a little bit to the cheekbone. So it brings attention to a different part of the face and it just makes us look a little bit different, a little bit more fresh for those really social months when we're out there a little bit more. And then fall, winter, you know, a little bit more crisp, longer layers, uh, cleaner, cooler vibe. And that way you stay on point with your seasonal haircut. So I can't wait for some summer loving with you all. See you soon.